Our environment is full of stimulation. It's full of advertisements that trigger our needs, like we see food all the time. You see someone with a new smartphone or with a new car and you get these feelings of wealth and status. So, how do we stop it? Engaging with the arts can be a powerful experience, stimulating our senses, thoughts and feelings. It can be calming or exciting, and sometimes everything at once. It is difficult to put into words what happens in our minds when we are engaging with the arts. But some scientific research suggests it can help us to be present and filter out distractions. But then again, what is art really? And how does our brain actually respond when we perceive an artwork? We know that there are many different large-scale networks in the brain. So, for example, there is the network of regions that are involved in uh, analyzing the visual world. It's focused outwardly. There, in addition, is known to be a network called the default mode network it is intrinsically or inwardly oriented. If you ask someone to look at this image, to listen to the sound, you actually find that this brain network, the DMN, is suppressed. It actually becomes less active and instead becomes more active when people have no specific task and turn inward and think about what am I going to do after this session or what am I going to have for lunch tomorrow? If I show someone an artwork that they don't find very interesting or aesthetically moving, that the visual system is active and the default mode network is suppressed. In which city are we? No, but... <laughs> We were invited to the Visual Science of Art Conference that was established in 2012 to connect communities of scientists and artists for interdisciplinary collaborations. We were able to meet and discuss and to deepen our understanding of aesthetic phenomena together, as well as to watch renowned scientists and artists in action. A lot of people forget that humans are basically biological entities producing art. I think we can understand a lot about the human mind and culture if we study the production and application of art in the brain. We all agree that the definition of art as something beautiful is much too narrow for the special, sometimes even cathartic, experience many people have when engaging with the arts. Beauty is not the most important concept when it comes to art. And the concept of challenge, and actually if you're able to face the challenge and get into it and get something out of it, you have this kind of extra reward that you kind of engage with it in an interesting way. That makes art for most people maybe more valuable than just being beautiful. I think we have to leave behind the idea that artworks are just interesting objects to study for psychology of perception or psychology of aesthetics. We have to take art very serious. It's part of what makes us human and it's, it's omnipresent. We can know for sure, but it's possible that humans have engaged in artistic practices since the beginning of human civilization. Yet, we still don't completely understand why the arts entice our senses, thoughts and feelings to such a degree. Archaeological evidence suggests that we may have created and admired art for millennia. We know nothing about the appreciative practice people have. We have some intuitions, what might be important about engagement with art, but also just intuition. So we need another discipline actually to tell us how do actually people in the museum, in their homes, interact with the art. What's so fascinating is that I believe that science can uncover certain aspects of art where people already had an idea that it might happen, but it needs empirical proof. And certain things can never be said about art if we don't have empirical data to show it. And that's what our task is. It seems that our connection to the arts is part of our humanity, and science can help us understand their importance. One thing is for sure, the arts can help us escape from our everyday lives, even if just for a brief instant of time. These activities are they had this function to focus back on ourselves, connect to ourselves, connect to our imagination, connect to our society, and think of only one thing. <laughs>